Welcome to In The Loop with Laura. Today we're on location in Rochester at the Rochester Middle School, and I'm here with art teacher Sandy Schaefer. Welcome. Thank you. I had somebody contact me and say, Laura, I am interested in doing different crafting work, but what about someone who is not confident in color? All of us have started off somewhere. Sometimes it's seeing a finished project, a finished quilt, a finished sweater, and we say, I want to make that. And we go to the store and we think, I got to buy the exact right yarn. It has to be the exact shades in the picture. But when you start to experiment more, you think, you know, I don't look good in barf beige. I want to get something else. And that's where color and color theory, which is how colors go together, come into play. And so I have contacted Sandy, who was very willing to give us her... Um, preparation time at school and I really appreciate that to talk about color theory. We're going to have some students come on and we're also going to see a couple artwork as well as textile art that deals with color. All right so Sandy can you tell us what is the color wheel? The color wheel we have right in front of us is very basic. You would start with your primary colors which would be the red, yellow, and the blue and all those colors would mix together to create your secondary and your tertiary colors. So if you take a look you have the primary right here and if you take the primary and mix it with another primary so yellow and red would make the orange and then you'd have yellow and blue make the green and then blue and red make the purple. And then you can mix a primary with the secondary to get the tertiary. Now that sounds real complicated, but it really is not. And so color theory is all about how you put the colors together. Now there's other things I can talk to you about, which would be analogous colors. Those would be colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. And I wore a, a top that is analogous for a good example. So if you were to look over here, you would see that the green and the blues are beside each other. So that would be analogous. Sometimes people like that color scheme. Uh, and then there's also something called complementary colors, and those would be colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So you would have red and green, and when you put those together, whatever you're making is going to pop. So you think of Christmas colors, red and green pop, and also orange mm -hmm. and a blue, and then yellow and purple. So we talk about that with the kids here at school, what is going to attract attention, and usually it's the complimentary. So it depends on the type of feeling you want your textile uh, piece of work that you're doing to have. Mm -hmm. So when you have students come in, do you have students who just get it, or do you have students who don't have any idea what you're talking about, and how do they make those color choices? Yeah, we have all of the above. Uh, some students, they have remembered from elementary as far as how the color wheel works. But we always try to start with the primary colors because you can make any of the other colors with those. So yeah, we have a full gamut. I think that this is just fascinating because everybody, I mean, you thought about color when you picked out your shirt. And we're talking about color here in school. But color and art go way beyond just a classroom setting and sitting down for an hour and painting something. How, and I just wanted to highlight that because it's my passion with this show and with textiles, but beyond that with all kinds of art. And I appreciate the work that you do for us. We're, if anybody watches TV and reads any kind of newspaper things, you know the push for testing and for I-STEP and the big stink with the I-STEP testing last year. and. Um, science and math, but here we are in an art room. What does that do for a student to be exposed to art as opposed, you know, for a half hour a day? Is that all it is, or how does art affect students here in Rochester and other places? Well, you could ask about anybody and they're going to have their opinion. That's true. Um, but as far as I, my thinking, it develops the whole person. It develops both sides of the brain. Mm. Uh, the left side of the brain is actually overworked throughout the whole day. You have your math, you have your science. That's on the left side of the brain, but the right side of the brain develops the art. That would be music, that'd be dance, it, you know, it could be visual art. Mm -hmm. And Physical so- Physical education, if, was that um, on the right side or maybe both? It has movement. I don't really know, to tell you the truth on that. I hadn't thought about that one. Both. It might be the rules of sports and right. the movement. 
So in, I think the right side needs to be developed more. And you, you get a lot of kids who say, I can't draw. Mm -hmm. Well, they can. They just haven't had that right side activated. So when we do different things in our class, we try to activate that side. Now, I was doing some research in preparation for this, and there is research that says that with the art that you have in class, those students will perform better on testing. And I, I don't have all the numbers um, in front of me, but it has, they've done studies that when they have had art, music, and developed the whole person, then all of those, all those numbers go up. That's exactly what I was going to just ask you is by having an hour of art a day, are we taking away from something? Or, you know, what is the benefit? And it sounds like, and, and I know there's lots of students, maybe some of your children or grandchildren who just have a hard time sitting for all that time anyway. And to be able to combine movement with thinking things through and when you can use your hands as well as not just a computer all day, I would think that that incorporates yes. things in a different way. And when I teach, I try to show the kids uh, both an example so they can see it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the kids are visual learners. I am. Even when I would try to spell a word, I have to see a visual picture in my brain to be able to spell. That just helps me. And so, I mean, that's something else that you could develop and help the kids in the other subjects. And we talk a lot about that. We The other day we were talking about a blueprints, how we need to have a plan before we actually make art, just like you would need a plan mm -hmm. to build a house. You wouldn't think about building a house without your blueprints blueprints so art is in everything and um, so I, I think it's, it's huge to have that for every student especially at the middle school level mm -hmm. for them to experience that so when they get to the high school they know if they would like to continue and you know by that time you're thinking about what do I want to do in my life mm -hmm. and and like I said art is everywhere someone had to design these chairs and tables and our clothing <laughs> That's true. Well, let's um, take some of this information we've just touched on a little bit with the color wheel, and let's get some students and talk to them about some of the color choices they've made in artwork. We have three sixth graders here who have just completed a project that you can see above in a moment that is talking about colors and Zen doodling. Zen doodling. And so we'll start with your names. What's your name, please? Kennedy Weimar. Nice to meet you. Quinn Stasiak. Hi, Quinn. And Lillian Meyer. Great. So the teacher, if you want to come here and tell us a little bit, what was the assignment? They, sorry, they traced their hands, and then after they traced their hands, we talked about different kinds of designs that they could fill in the sections, and it's called Zen Doodling. If you Google that, you'll see there's lots of ideas for that. So we were studying line, uh, which is one of the elements of art. And then after they got that all filled in, then they got to color it, and that's where the color theory comes in. And they had to choose a warm color theme or a cool color theme. What does that mean? Okay. Can you tell us, Kennedy, what is a cool color theme? A cool color theme is a calming and overall backdrop of the colors. They're blue, green, and purple. Yes. You want to, you want to point yours out up here? Okay. Oh, dear. Sorry. So you aim towards... I went through the cool colors theme. Yes. That's beautiful. So she has cool colors, and then they were supposed to choose the opposite of that to, to put the color around right here uh, around their hand. And so she chose orange because that is a warm color, which is the opposite of cool colors. How about you, Quinn? I had a cool color scheme for because I like the cool and cal calm, relaxing colors. What color? What, do you have a cool color on right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and how about you, Lillian? I went with the warm color scheme, which made it pop out. And yeah. What are, what are some different things that w would be out in nature that would ha be warm? Um, like the sun and uh, flowers. <laughs> yeah, flowers. flowers and fire. Grass. Yeah. Well, Sorry about that, grass. Kennedy. And Fine. yes, like grass. I was going to ask, so how do the warm and the cool colors, when they're near each other, how do they react together? They collide. They, it makes one color pop out. Okay. 
Yeah, and they collide and pop out. And <laughs> we, we talked about complementary earlier in this segment, and so uh, they're complementary to each other, so you would have the orange and the blue. One is warm, one is cool, and so when you put them together, it's going to be very eye-catching. I want to take a look at what Kennedy's done up here because she's done such a good job with the cool colors. They just, they're blending into each other, one, one finger to the other. And, it, and yet when you've got this warm color behind, it makes the whole thing pop out. So that's a great illustration. And we can see just the opposite with this one here. These are all those bright, warm colors. And then the blue behind is kind of a startling um, foil, you would say. Great, well we're going to go to one other location where the kids have some more of these projects and take a look at two others that our two kids did. Okay, we're on a second location where the rest of the hands are, and so Lillian is gonna share with us which one of the hands is are hers, and then also share with us uh, why you chose the colors you chose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one's mine. I chose the warm colors because it gets a warm feeling inside and it like makes you feel relaxed kind of, so. Did you uh, mix some warm colors together to get some other warm colors? Yes, I did. <laughs> Um, I mix like orange and red and stuff like that. Good. So that's where you get some of your tertiary colors. You would take some of the ones that are already a primary and then a secondary and then you could get a tertiary. So you could get a yellow orange or you could get an orange red. So there's different hues that you can create. All right. How about you, Quinn? Mine was the one in the corner. I picked the cool color scheme because I like the relaxing uh, relaxing colors makes you feel calmer when you draw and sketch lines very good I like that nice language I just wanted to say thank you to all three of you thank you for being willing to come on and uh, share your artwork which is a very personal thing and I think all three of you are good artists thank you so much for coming thank, thank, you. thank you thank you for letting us be on your show <laughs> thanks for coming have a great middle school day you too Thanks, guys. We're back in the art room with Mrs. Schaefer, and she has brought today two quilts that she has made. So she is a textile artist as well as an artist, um, a visual artist. And she has brought two quilts today, which are a really good demonstration of warm and cool color schemes. And I just wanted to go through that again. For somebody who's never heard those terms, when you say cool colors, you'd think, does that mean they're popular? Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. If we look to this quilt right here that Sandy has made. Can you tell us what it is and tell us about it a little bit? The pattern is called the triple rail and this is a quilt that uh, not only myself but some family members we worked on it together for my son who's going to be graduating from high school this year and so we used what I would call a cool color scheme but it also you could say they're analogous colors. Analogous colors would be colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. Now the green that you see the the lighter green that is almost a warm color because it has a, a lot of yellow in it so even though we would consider it a cool color because green is a cool color it can lean more toward the warm so that's kind of hard to explain but as a result it is a good example because as a result because it has that yellow in it when you look at it as a whole the warm colors come towards you correct exactly. and the war uh, cool colors recede and so that's an excellent example there if you stand way back from this you see those green zigzags more than um, the Camry or these other um, right. patterned ones and and this bluish I don't you call what, what you call this a Camry it's a candy, yeah. yeah it has more of a I'd call that more of a, a shade because it has it's more grayed down uh, so it would have probably more of the complement or it would have more of a you know black in it mm -hmm. to gray it down so that also helps it one other thing I wanted to point out for those of you who are quilters or who have watched some of the quilting shows we've talked about, she has pieced the top, but it's not yet quilted. Correct. So it will be quilted. Mm -hmm. And now if we turn around over here, this is another quilt that Sandy has made, but it's so vibrant and so different. And it is um, centered on the warm tones, but it uses 
cool tones just mm-hmm. to give it vibrancy. Do you want to tell us about this one, please? Yes. Uh, this one, when I bought the pattern, it had kind of a Caribbean theme. Mm-hmm. And I really liked, I like bright colors. Anybody who knows me would know that. And so I wanted a little more of a punch in my, this actually is a quilt I have in, on my bed, in my bedroom. And so uh, these are batiks, and I had several of those already. So some of it was kind of scrappy. And then I chose some other batiks that I thought would help complement those. So you can see most of these um, definitely have the bright colors, the warm colors in them. Uh, But then I balanced that out with the cool colors. So to me, it looks like it's kind of going back and forth, uh, kind of Mm -hmm. vibrating a little bit. Uh And some people probably would not care for that in their bedroom. (laughs) But um, I just, I like bright colors. So it makes me cheerful. One thing I know about quilts is um, they talk about places for your eyes to rest or places to make your eye roam, and this does just have a vibrancy to it with the use of the colors. Were there some colors in here that you thought in the past, oh, I would never use that? I mean, yeah. Tell, tell us about your color choices. I was concerned about the really bright orange, um, and I, I played around with that one and also this one right here. But once it came all together, I liked it because it does make your eye move throughout the quilt. Um, I don't care for really dark colors, particularly probably this one, uh, and it's more muted, but it works. You do need some of those areas where your eye rests. Mm -hmm. So now I want to get to a point where perhaps it will be um, applicable to people who are watching. And that is somebody who has done one or two quilts, they've um, purchased kits, they have done exactly as the directions commanded. And now they want to start experimenting and they're freaked out because they say there are a thousand colors that I could choose from. How am I gonna choose my base color? I understand that there are multiple colors. How do I choose my next ones? Um, What would you say to someone like that? (laughs) I would, I would start basic. I would ask yourself first the question, what kind of a feeling do I want? Do I want a calm, cool feeling, or do I want some excitement? Mm-hmm. That will help you determine which route you want to go. So this is more exciting, so I wanted to have brighter colors. The other quilt that we were looking at earlier is more calming. Uh, So I would ask yourself that question first. And then I wouldn't get too many colors going at one time. Um, I would just pick a few to start out with. Three to five, I I always work with odd numbers. That's always Mm -hmm. good in art Mm -hmm. rather than the the other. I should mention the other quilt that I did, the the blue and the green, I experimented and varied from the pattern, Uh, not only with the color, but the arrangement. Hmm. And... uh and you're still alive. And nothing, I'm still alive. <laughs> nothing bad happened to you. No. Okay. no, although I'll have to share when I was getting the fabric at the fabric store, the lady who was helping me, she did not want me going in that direction. So oh you might goodness. you might have to fight some of the people who work there because sometimes they have a mindset of you have to do it a certain way. That's that's pretty funny. <laughs> I often tell people if I'm teaching or if they're picking out colors for a knitted project, I say it's yarn. This, we're not hang gliding. There's no um, free propulsion from an airplane or nothing bad's gonna happen. Let's say you knit, except perhaps um, people might say you wasted a little time if you knit a swatch and you don't like it, but then have you truly wasted it if you know those colors don't end up going together? That's that's right. On this quilt, uh, the blue and the green one, should I walk over there? (laughs) Uh, This one right here, before I got together with my other family members this weekend, I did have my pattern worked out. We made another one that was a triple rail that had a lot of beige and neutral colors in it. And we got really behind schedule because we didn't like the placement. Mm. And so you might want to just play around a little bit with it or make a graph on graph paper Mm -hmm. and color it out just with colored pencils. That could save you if you're concerned about fabric, Mm -hmm. if you're buying brand new fabric and it's not scrap. Uh, That'll save you some, some money. And I would encourage you to do that, to buy a, a color pencil set that's got a lot of color pencils and then hide it from your children and grandchildren. Um, and then just pull that out if you want to see how colors go together. Or if you know the main fabric you want to use or the main yarn you want to use, travel with a little piece of that when you go shopping for the other things. And then ask if you can go into sunlight 
to view them because sunlight or um, inside and outside it can look different. Um, and then the last piece of advice I'd give you is if you're doing a really scrappy quilt or uh, lots of colors in a fair aisle, you, you're going to need some of the darker colors. You're going to need at least one bright color. You, you have to experiment and that's going to be the, the sweater or the quilt that really stands out when you make it pop. So thank you again, Sandy, for coming. You're welcome. I appreciate you interviewing me and thinking of me. Your time is valuable, and we appreciate you as a teacher and as an artist. And I just want to say, I went all through uh, school, and I never once had an art class. And so if any of your students are saying, Mom, I think I want to take an elective in high school or in middle school, encourage them to do it. If they take an art class, they're going to be a richer, fuller person. It doesn't mean that that's going to be... Uh, what they do for the rest of their life and never become an engineer. They're just going to be a much more um, complete person as an engineer. Yes, and uh, no definitely. one no one regrets it. That's right. And you'll have some things you can do in your spare time, too. Yep. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. A book report for you all who are so challenged that you really want to have a tool or you want to have something that's very complete to help you in picking out um, your colors for your next textile project or for any artists out there who um, might appreciate this. This is a book written by a knitter, Susan Levin, L-E-V-I-N. This is one that I own. I did not get it from the library, but it would be possible to interlibrary loan this from our Fulton County Library. The name of it is Color Sense, Creative Color Combinations for Crafters. And inside, it's a tremendous workbook. First of all, it has um, the edge where it can sit flat and it's not gonna flip open on, uh, flip closed or flip the pages on you. It is, has a wonderful introduction and then it has page after page of color combinations. Monochromatic, some with shades and some with values. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, perhaps you should get the book. It shows all these combinations. Then in the back, it has a series of colors that you can tear out. The names of them are on the back. And then you can combine the swatches. And then lastly in the back, it has a color wheel that you can remove. And on the color wheel, it has inside are the saturated tones. We have primary, we have secondary, we have all different monochromatic schemings that are explained in the book. And what you can do is first of all, if you have a fabric or a yarn that you want to match, you can take this and place it over and you can find out exactly what this is. So I would say that this one is right here, number seven, it's a type of red. And then you can take that and you can help that and match to things that are of similar saturation. Or you can find the color inside here and see what it might go with and how it matches. I would like to just read a little bit from the introduction because I thought it was fantastic. This woman, Susan Levin, says, I love color. It imparts richness, texture, and beauty to everything I see. Dark, velvety colors console me when I'm sad. Bright, vibrant colors are my co-conspirators when I'm happy. Without color, the world would lose much of its subtlety, intimacy, and power. She goes on to talk about how to pick out some of these colors and how this book can help you in picking out colors. My challenge to you is to see what your color sense is. When you're picking out your clothes in the morning, try to think, I'm gonna wear complementary colors today. Or when you're going for a walk, look to see what colors God created and how he placed them in the palette of the earth. And then the next project that you face, whether it's textile or something else, think about color and how it affects you and how, what you want to produce. Thank you again for joining me on In The Loop.